Okay, so Princess Catherine did make her announcement regarding her diagnosis with having cancer. Of course, as the past couple of weeks, we all have been wondering, we have been speculating about Princess Kate, Kate Middleton, depending on what you want to call her. Actually, she prefers to be called Catherine. So Princess Catherine, although American media and keywords and SEO prefers we call her Kate Middleton, but... She has been married. She is the Princess of Wales for quite a long time. So tonight we are going live here to discuss which celebrities have apologized to Kate, um, which ones have not. And we're also going to talk about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and their response. We'll talk about uh, Kim Kardashian, Blake Lively, Stephen Colbert, the women from The View, and we're going to talk a little bit about P. Diddy and uh, Prince Harry in the process. So welcome, guys, from California. Hi. Um, welcome, guys, from the Midwest, from all over. I am Deanna, and we're going to break this down. I'm going to read because there's so many different articles about what people have said. I'm going to apologize myself. I did make a little fun of the Photoshop, but all, all of you who know me know I'm a huge fan. And I also cover Princess Catherine and have been for a few years now. So let's talk about this. Blake Lively had put up a post, which I mean, honestly, it wasn't that rude, but this is what she says. She said she's mortified about her joke about Kate Middleton's Photoshop fails. This is from Blake Lively. Um, having an apology for the Princess of Wales confirmed um, when the Princess of Wales confirmed that she has undergone treatment for cancer. I'm sure no one cares today, she says, Blake Lively says, but I think I have to acknowledge this. Lively said in a message shared Friday in her Instagram, I made a silly post about the Photoshop fails frenzy and oh man, the post has me mortified today. I'm sorry, sending love and well wishes to all always. This was Blake Lively's response to Princess Catherine and the cancer diagnosis from the Princess of Wales when she made the announcement last Friday. On March 15th, Lively, so Lively's, Lively's post was a comically edited photo promoting her Betty Buzz beverage line, showing her sitting poolside holding a can of Betty, Betty Booze with an enlarged thumb and a lemon floating above her head and her chair seat pro improbably separated from its back. In the since deleted Instagram post, Lively had written, I'm so excited to share this new photo I just took today to announce our four new Betty Buzz and Betty Booze products. Now you know why I've been MIA. Thank you guys. And thank you, Shield Wall of Dragons. I love you guys' um, you know, kind of code names. Okay, so that was Blake Lively. Ooh, I should have shown you the picture I had. Hold on a second. This was Blake Lively. I like Blake Lively. She's one of my favorites, and she was one of the first to come out. Now, come out with the apology and not come out with, you know, anything else. <laughs> so anyhow, now let's see what you guys have to say. Wouldn't Princess Kate have abdominal cancer because she had the surgery, which was abdominal surgery? Mm -mm, Rahala, that's a good point. Well, but it could have, that's a good point. However, there's many cancers that could have occurred with them having to go into her abdominal region. It could be anything from, you know, a colon issue to, um, you know, uterine cancer. Like there's all kinds of things that it could be. So I don't know. And, you know, they're not giving us the specs, right? They're not giving us the specifics. So we don't know. But, um, that would that would seem like to be that would seem to be the simple answer. But let's see what the women of the view had to say. First off, Whoopi Goldberg was like said to these women, hey, don't say anything bad. Believe it or not, Whoopi said that. And then they all kind of went off. So the women of the view started their Monday, which was the first time that they were back since the Friday announcement. Um, indulging the frenzied speculation about Britain's Catherine, Princess of Wales, panelist Alyssa Farah Griffin, Sarah Haynes, Anna Navarra, Sunny Houston went around the talk show's hot topic table sheep, sheepishly sharing their apologies. They weren't so sheepish when they were sharing their insults. 
Several specifically said that they regretted not listening to Whoopi, who said um, she discouraged them from playfully dissecting Kate Middleton, citing and conspiracy theories that were swirling around the disappearing princess, especially in the wake of Kensington Palace's photo editing fumble. Uh, Joy Behar was not there on the Monday panel. I'm sure. I don't even know if she would apologize. Goldberg has insisted previously that they refrain from theorizing. Okay, so anyhow, they theorized anyhow. So this is what the women had to say. I'm guilty of having gotten into the fun of where's Kate and thinking it's funny and sharing the memes and playing into that, Griffin said. I forgot something fundamental that we all know, which is every person, whether they're a princess, somebody at a high privileged position, or just the person next to you is dealing with personal struggles that we don't know about. Griffin, who said she feels awful about the cruelty and casual meanness that accompanied the discourse about the potential future queen, also said that she believes Kensington Palace totally mishandled the PR of this course. It's kind of like a backhanded compliment, or I mean, apology. But the public and the but the public mishandled it too. I don't think there, uh, I don't think about there's something more serious that she's dealing with, and I feel awful over it. Okay, then I'm going to tell you what um, Haynes said, but first I'm going to look and see what you guys have to say. Um, okay, we're we're responding to Rahala. People were making like 50 episode TikToks going down the Kate Rabbit trail. I know. Um, it was, and then some people are still saying that even her apology looked like an AI uh, deep fake. That's what some people are saying. Hi, Christian. Welcome. Yes, they did mishandle it. I agree. And they should have figured it out way sooner. Yeah. And like, so who mishandled it? Like if they're really in charge of their media, you know, I guess if they're getting advice, it's like their choice to say yes or no. So I guess it's Will and Kate who mishandled it. Um, and then Haynes said, you just never know what somebody's going through. Um, Haynes said, noting that the palace's March 10th release of doctored photos had ignited her curiosity. I've always questioned the way that the royal family handles women. Okay. Elaborate. Maybe because of Diana. Because whether it was Princess Diana or Fergie or Meghan Markle. So basically she's saying that you know, something really sinister could have happened. I was not blaming Kate for what was going on. It really bothered me the way it was handled, whether it should have been my business or not could be debated, but I do hope now for a speedy recovery. The misguided discussion was just teachable moment for Navarro. She said, the lesson I learned was when Whippy Goldberg tells me to mind my own damn business, I will mind my own damn business. Okay, girl. It was, I mean, Actually, you're an adult. You don't have to wait for another panelist on The View to tell you to mind your own business. It was strange for me to fall down this rabbit hole, but it was everywhere, right? There was an international frenzy. You couldn't avoid it. It was actually reputable news outlets, not just tabloids. That's true. It was everywhere. I fell down it because I think that altered photo, It. I mean, it is true. The photo definitely got everybody to go, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? A thousand percent, a thousand percent. I don't think that they handled it right. But anyhow, so then she says, I think we all like her because she's like a bright spot in what has been a very dysfunctional royal family for decades and decades. She looks like such a great and she is. And she's, like I said, my favorite princess. When I heard about her cancer diagnosis, it made me so sad. Um, but I'm going to believe that she's going to be fine. I'm going to shut my mouth about her. And then Houston said she's deeply remorseful. I was very invested in how Meghan Markle said she was treated. Girl, uh, are we going to go into that this time? I was very invested. Um, and it almost drove her to death by, you know, offing herself. That's one part of the family dynamic that I was pretty interested in, of course. Um, and then also Prince William's brother, Harry and his wife, blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, so that that was how the view apologized. Did you guys see any of this? Um, okay, so let me kind of go to what you guys are saying, and then we'll go to the next apology. Um, recovery. Okay, what if, and then the coronation occurred. Okay, I know. Girl, I don't want, what if Kate died, and then the coronation occurred, then Prince William will be alone, and we would only have king and no queen. Okay. All right, this is what, see, I was thinking of how sad that would be because it would be two queens in a row that were supposed to be a queen, like Princess Diana and now Princess Catherine. Obviously, 
I'm not even going to entertain that because this is a woman, in my opinion, if anybody should be queen, it should be her. She has been gracious, elegant, beautiful. Like, so I don't even want to, but yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Um, re recovery from surgery is very serious. Correct. Kate is loved and an Ill illness like this would in no way garner anything but love and concern. The clumsy attempts with the Photoshop photo was uh, like, that is true. That It's like catnip to people. It, it is true. It is true. Okay. I agree with you. Let's go on to the next article. Let's talk about, I think it's Stephen Colbert that I have next. Hold, hold on. Let me see. No, 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 no. I'll show you who I have next. Give me a second. Oh, no. I didn't want to do that. Okay, wait. Uh, present, share screen. Okay. I'm going to show you this one. This was interesting. This was interesting. Now, I think in a way she's kind of using Leah McSweeney. I agree with her, but she's kind of using this situation for, I hate to say it, a little bit of her own agenda, which is to get Andy Cohen down. I don't blame her, but it's, you know, there is a little extra stuff here. So Leah McSweeney, let me make sure I have the right article. Let's talk about Leah. Ms. Okay. So Leah McSweeney, um, says that Andy Cohen owes Kate an apology because he's so cruel to women all the time. So Leah McSweeney is taking Andy Cohen to task, claiming he loves viciously going after women and calling on him to apologize to Kate Middleton. Um, the former Real Housewives of New York filed a lawsuit against Andy Cohen back in February, called out Cohen on Instagram Friday hours after the Princess of Wales. Shocking cancer announcement. In the statement shared to her Instagram story, Leah says Cohen enjoys being cruel to women and adds Kate with no exception to the rule. She continues by saying Cohen needs to apologize to Catherine and finishes by calling on people in power to practice better leadership. Andy shared a tweet after TMZ obtained video of Prince William and Princess Catherine walking on a, at a farm stand in Windsor writing, that ain't Kate. He also reportedly spoke about rumors of infidelity between William and his uh, on his podcast earlier the week, all before Kate announced she's dealing with cancer. All in all, not a great look for Cohen, who's just one of the many celebs who caught um, some flack for jokes and comments. Um, and then, so I don't know if he even apologized. McSweeney suing Cohen and Bravo, claiming they created a toxic work environment where her mental health and alcohol use disorder were exploited. Okay, um, and McSweeney has been telling people to lay off Kate for a while, posting Sunday, March 17th, wishing Middleton well while asking people to respect the princess's privacy and stop gossiping. Okay, so that was the deal with her. What else do you guys have to say? Because I'm going to go on to talk about Stephen Colbert. Uh-huh. He's my least favorite. Um, okay. Kate is strong. Yes, MJ. I mean, really, she sat there and just whew, like went for it. And that is not easy. You know, you get like no time. You're trying to be quiet. You're trying to just kind of deal with the fact that now you have cancer, whatever cancer it is. And all of these people are I mean, I heard some things. I don't even have it in my imagination to create. Like, I really don't. I don't have any. I wouldn't have been able to figure to, to imagine what they were saying. So it was just wild. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about Stephen Colbert. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about him. Okay, hold on. I want to share this. No, I wanted to add it to the stage. Okay, um, let's talk about Stephen. Okay, so he was, I, I call his apology one of those Justin Bieber apologies. Sorry, not sorry. You know what I'm saying? It's like, sorry, not sorry. That's what he was doing. I love Princess Catherine so much. I do too. She's my favorite. I call her the Mary Poppins princess because she's practically perfect in every single way. That is the way I see her. And it does make me sad. Rahala brought something up. I just, I literally am taking this to prayer or, or just like sending positive vibes because I have to see Kate become queen. I just have to, like, I don't know if I can tolerate the injustice 
of both Diana and Catherine not becoming queen one day. I just don't know if I can tolerate that. I really hope that there's a new coronation soon. I want the king to be fine, but yeah. Stephen Colbert adds to apologies after Kate Middleton's cancer announcement. Again, she likes for us to call her Princess Catherine, but we're American. So we say Kate and Princess Kate. That's kind of how we are. We're more casual. She likes Catherine, whatever. Rumors had swirled online since January about her health. Late, late night, Stephen Colbert sent well wishes to Kate on his show Monday night, two weeks after going viral with the spilling the tea monologue about the rumors surrounding the royal. In the wake of that monologue, Colbert was criticized for giving light to the frenzy of online rumors about Kate amid her absence from public duties, undergoing abdominal surgery. The criticisms he and other face grew after Kate basically said, hey, I've got cancer. Um, and then, so this is his apologies, guys, listen up. I want to know if you think it's one of those sorry, not sorry moments, okay? He says, we do a lot of shows and I tell a lot of jokes and I tell jokes about a lot of different things, mostly about what everybody's talking about. And for the last six weeks to two months, everybody has been talking about the mystery of Kate Middleton's disappearance from public life. About two weeks ago, we did some jokes about the mystery and all the attendant frou fra in the reporting about that. And when I made those jokes, that upset some people. I don't hear an apology yet, even before her diagnosis was revealed. And I can understand that. Then he went on to say, well, wishes, nothing that he holds himself to, noting that he holds himself to a standard in which he does not make light of someone else's tragedy. Then he says, I don't know whether her prognosis is a tragic one, but regardless of what it is, I know, and I'm sure many of you, far too many of us know that any cancer diagnosis of any kind is harrowing for the patient and their family. And I thought, and, and though I'm sure they don't need it from me, I and everyone here on the late show would be, would like to extend our well wishes and a heartfelt note that her recovery is swift and thorough. Colbert's decision to address his jokes about Kate came just days after Blake Lively was among the first to apologize in the wake of Kate's disclosure. Um, so anyhow, did you think that sounded like an apology or a non-apology? Let me know. I felt, I feel like it's like, okay, I make jokes, yada, 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 but whatever. Now let's talk about, let's talk about the Kardashians or Kim. Okay, first off, I do think that some of the things that some of these people did, honestly, was not that bad. But when you're a celebrity, um, you know, it's always good to maybe apologize. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me see. Okay. So I am going to go on. Okay. Hello, Stephen. Hello. I love his show, but that's not an apology. Yeah. It was sort of like a sorry, not sorry kind of thing. You know, it wasn't really like, oh, I'm sorry. It was like, hey, I made a joke. I wish her well. I mean, it's a tough call because we are in the entertainment business. We do report about people. It was crazy town. There was so much going on. And I'm sorry, but the royal family, maybe maybe should have been a little bit more forthcoming a little bit earlier, or at least it's, I don't know, they kind of dragged it out. I mean, I guess a positive is that she's going to be one of the most popular princesses ever. Okay. Kim Kardashian under pressure to apologize for Kate Middleton joke. Do you think Kim is going to apologize? Um, let me know. Okay, so Kim Kardashian is being pressed to apologize and take down her insensitive post about Kate Middleton. Kim apparently is getting clobbered on her Instagram. After a royal announcement on Friday that she's battling cancer, Kardashian was one of the many public figures who uh, piled on the speculation about why Kate has been absent from public life for months. The Princess of Wales had not appeared in public since Christmas Day. We know that. On March 17th, the reality star posted a photo of herself posing in front of a luxury car while she was wearing leather pants and a black crop top on my way to go find Kate. That was her joke. Okay. Um, 
on March of 23rd, Kate announced what we know that she has cancer. The shocking revelation prompted social media followers to return to Kardashian's post, urging her to apologize. So these are some of the requests. After the news of her having cancer has been revealed, you should really take this down. It's extremely insensitive and you owe our princess an apology. I think an apology is needed. Can you please go find an apology instead? Didn't age well. You never know when someone is battling. Others called on Kardashian to remove the post entirely. Kardashian was asked about the joke soon after the Princess of Wales announced her cancer in a video on the Daily Mail. A photographer can be heard asking Kardashian any comments about Kate as she leaves her son's soccer game. She says nothing. Kardashian isn't the only cel celeb. Okay, we know, we know, we know, we know. So, um, and then this one, Kinsey Schofield, who is awesome, and she is a royal commentator. She goes, I'm mad at Kim Kardashian's making fun of the situation. I'm mad at the John Olivers. I'm mad at the Stephen Colbert's. And I'm mad that this person became a punchline when she was going through something so serious and horrible behind the scenes. And so um, that's that with that. Okay, so let me see what you guys have to say for yourself. Wendy says, not an apology, just trying to protect himself, sickening. Okay, Blake's apology didn't seem heartfelt like she was obligated. I don't know. I feel like she came out first though. And, um, I don't know. I, I think Blake's was probably, but I don't know. I didn't see the apology. I just kind of read up on it. Okay. I am a, hold on Beverly. Okay. Wait, on my way to go find Kate is funny as heck. It actually makes what, uh, okay. Beverly, I'm amazed at all of the WME clients that have to apologize to princess Kate. It is absolutely disgusting. Tell me how involved WME and in, is in all of this. Do you think that all of, okay, so I think what Beverly's saying, Beverly, comment again if I'm incorrect. So you're saying that most of the people that said something negative were celebrities that are um, working with the same agent, WME, as the Harkles, Megan and Harry, and that possibly they were encouraged to be able to, to say this, right? Is that what you're saying? So, I mean, a, a lot of celebrities are, um, you know, they do work with WME. So I don't know. I, I mean, there's probably would be a high percentage of them, but I don't know. I haven't followed that side of it, to be honest. But tell me if that's what you meant. Um, on my way to go find Kate, I already posted that one. Um, the Kardashians. I could care less for anti-Kate people. I could care less for them. Um yeah, I know. It makes fun at the outrageous people saying a whore. It, it makes fun at the other whore. I mean, and that's the thing. We don't know, like, I mean, I didn't think Kim's comment, in all honesty, was that bad. I mean, I am a huge fan of um, Princess Catherine's, as you guys know. I mean, I've been following her for, you know, a few years and making content for her for a few years. I made a joke. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I made a joke about the bad, uh, about the bad Photoshop. I, I mean, I definitely, you know, kind of played into that. I was not chasing things down like a lot of people are, and it was not chasing down the rabbit trail regarding infidelities and this and that. We did talk about it. We were like, Hey, where is she? And is, is this really Kate? But these are inquisitive questions. It's like, I mean, I think the frenzy with people asking was kind of natural. People would naturally ask. Um, okay, let me see. In, but in Stephen's defense, he makes everyone, okay, wait, he mocks everyone. And his apology is like if FNL did so. Yeah, yeah. And Stephen Colbert, yeah, exactly. Okay, all right, Beverly. Got it. Okay, let me see. This is a rule of standards. It's precisely the reason Princess Catherine is royal and all those reality. And uh, oh, yeah. Here's the thing. Somebody told me once when they were talking about, let's say, Megan, you know, like seeking fame after she already had her royal position. It's like there is this saying, I don't have it exactly, about how, yeah, fame is fame, but royalty transcends that even. So it's interesting. For example, Meghan Markle's desire to go back and just kind of be famous rather than becoming kind of iconic as a historic princess long term is kind of a step down. It's not next level. 
And then the royal family, I think what you're saying is that it is next level. It's kind of in the way that they are presenting themselves as next level. Okay, I'm going to show you guys something else. There's so much to talk about. I just put up a video. Oh, so speaking of Meghan and Harry, um, they apparently, this is not substantiated. We don't really know if they truly did apologize because one telling word in this in this article from people is the word Kate, where I know it's kind of a nickname, but they did say in the royal family, usually they refer to her as Catherine. So it's interesting that Meghan and Harry would go, oh yeah, we sent an apology. And then if they sent an apology, like who's reporting on that? Like who reports on it? So it's kind of tacky in a sense. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex also wrote in a public statement that they wish health and healing for Kate and the family. So that is a little telling because a lot of people say that if you're in the royal no, you know, you're going to call her Catherine. Maybe sometimes you call her by her nickname, Kate. But most people know that, like, she prefers to be called Catherine, I guess. And it's mainly us in America. So it's interesting that their comment would be about Kate, right? But maybe that's what Harry's always called her. Princess, um, oh wait, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are supporting Prince William and Kate. See, People Magazine constantly picks up on Harry and Meghan. Like, they're like, whatever Harry and Meghan wants them to report, they report. Prince William and Kate Middleton, both publicly and privately following Kate's cancer announcement, people understands that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have privately reached out to the Prince and Princess of Wales amid Kate's cancer diagnosis. Prince Harry, 39, and Meghan, 42, also showed their support for Kate by speaking out in a statement shared with people. Who's sharing the, uh, who's sharing the apology? Like, oh... Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? Like, do they have to, like, I, it just reeks to me that Harry and Meghan were like, we sent an apology, People Magazine. Can you write about it? Um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were last seen in with Princess Kate and Prince William in September of 2022 when the four stepped out for a surprise walkabout in Windsor after the death of Queen Elizabeth. Prince Harry and Meghan had been in Europe uh, in 2022 for a series of charity events where Queen Elizabeth died at the age of 96. The couple subsequently extended their trip from California where they have lived with their kids for, well, we all know that. Um, and then it says Harry and Meghan show the support comes with Prince after Prince Kate's Princess Catherine's announcement. Guys, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see what, okay. Mary. I am suspect and wouldn't be too surprised that Megan cursed the water <laughs> while in the palace. Girl, I, I don't know. I don't know. But the, the question, the real question is whether H&M are truly sincere in what they say or feel about the royal family. I mean, the dad, it's, it's a hot mess. Okay, so we know that the king... Prince Charles, King Charles, sorry, has cancer. And we expect to see him with the Easter walkabout with Queen Camilla. We know that Prince William is basically on deck to become king. Prince William's forever best friend for so long was his brother, Harry. We know that William's wife, his best friend, is enduring something intense. And we do know that William... Maybe not everybody agrees, but uh, this is what I have seen for, throughout the years is a family man. He just wants to take care and protect his family. Meanwhile, who is supporting Prince William through all this? You know, it's just a little crazy. And so when Harry and Meghan say to People Magazine, we we sent them a good a well wish. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah. So I just don't know. I, I We're going to read something else. I do not trust either one of them. I believe that they feed. Yes, me too. Okay, wait till let's, we need to talk about this hot topic. I just put up a video about this. Well, wait, first we'll talk about this. Okay, so do you guys believe this at all? Like there is this dramatic no, I think I'm blocking the thing. Hold on a minute. There is this dramatic 
conspiracy thought that it was all the Chinese and Russians who caused the Kate Middleton thing. I I believe genuinely that the fire that came out of this was basically because of the bad communication from the palace. Could it and did it kind of create a negative perception regarding the royal family that could then take the royal family down? Yeah, possibly. But I don't know if I really believe that this was fueled by the Chinese and the Russians. I'm so curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. Let me read the article. The government is reportedly concerned that Britain's adversaries are deliberately fueling disinformation about the Prince and Princess um, of Wales to destabilize the nation. Now, it is true that if this got crazy and everything, it could shake up because there's so many anti-monarchists. It could, but I don't know. It, I feel like it was organic. Kate's absence for the public eye following planned surgery in J January became a source of online rumors, speculation, and conspiracy theories until the princess revealed she had cancer. Um, and let's see where, <laughs> while Kate's video message has been met with an outpouring of public sympathy, unfounded conspiracies have continued to circulate people saying that it was a deep fake, um, with commentators online questioning the efficacy of chemotherapy or blaming Kate's diagnosis on COVID-19 um, jabs. There are now growing concerns among Whitehall officials about the possible involvement of state adversaries like China and Russia and Iran in the rise of conspiracy theory. I just listen. You guys probably don't know this about me yet, but I honestly, I entertain all the conspiracies. I just do. This is one that I just can't, I don't think I can get behind this one. I always read up on them and I think about them. Um, I do not try. Okay. So let me see what Beth has to say. I think the stress Harry and Meghan has put on this family, including the deceased grandparents. Oh yeah. Has a lot to do with the serious heart problems. Um, you mean, or of health, I think, of the, the, serious, the serious heart problems. Um, yeah, I mean, let's, I mean, I'm glad you brought it up because in Harry's book, let's think about Kate specifically. Kate was accused of being a racist. Um, she was accused of being tough and making Megan cry when many people say it was actually the opposite and that Megan was making fun of Charlotte. Um, she was mentioned several times negatively in the press, uh, you know, regarding Megan. So I, I do believe honestly, like that this woman has had to endure so much stuff in silence and just, she's just kept going and kept going, but the stress had to have been unbearable. Right. And she was close to Harry. She loved Harry. They were like best friends. So that's a good point. Okay. So but it's hot in Montecito after the hot rain in Los Angeles and my, oh, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> they should be guilty as hell for stressing out the royal family. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, but the monarchy has been around for over a thousand years. So propaganda from other countries will have that have little effect. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I guess why not? But I think in this particular case, it was organic. I really do. But guys, there's another there's another piece of news just to bring up. I did do a longer thing about this, but let's talk about this. Ta-da! What say you guys about Prince Harry being dragged into bombshell $30 million lawsuit against P. Diddy, producer suing rapper over mm, trafficking... Mm, yeah, says stars access to the Duke of Sussex and other celebrities boosted his legitimacy. Come on. Okay, I'm going to read the article. Harry is from the UK. Uh, the stress was coming from his behavior. True. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought that's what you were going for. <laughs> I thought that's what you were alluding to. Okay, so I'm going to read about this P. Diddy thing, although I could think I can kind of talk about it off the top of my head. 
but I'll just read some things and then you guys can comment and let me know your thought. Hi from Western North Carolina. Guess what? I was just in Western uh, North Carolina in Balsam Grove just the other day. I don't know if you know where that is. Okay. So, uh, P. Diddy, Prince Harry's name appears in U.S. court documents related to a $30 million lawsuit claiming that Sean Diddy Combs is a mm, abuser of men and women. Record producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a bombshell lawsuit against Diddy and claims that his affiliation to the Duke of Sussex and other stars gave him and his associates legitimacy. The court documents filed in the U.S. last month do not suggest any wrongdoing by Prince Harry. He's not a defendant and is named once, only once in the 30 page document. Um, but Lil, Lil Rod's lawyers claim guests were drawn to Diddy's alleged SA parties because of his access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry court documents filed. Prince William and Harry met P. Diddy and Kanye at a post-concert party for the prince of uh, the princes hosted to thank all who took part in the concert fight for Diana at Wembley Stadium in 2007. However, the Prince of Wales is not named in the court documents. It is not known how many times Harry has met the rapper. Guys. Oh. I mean, oh, oh. Okay, let's see what Wendy has to say. I don't think the palace or the prince and princess knew until after the surgery. So abdominal surgery is all they knew at the time and they were digesting it. I agree. Um, okay, yeah. Um, typical naughty Harry. Okay, so why though, why would they be mentioning Harry and not Will if they both met unless it was a different occasion? Okay, and I will say that Bishop T. D. Jakes is mentioned, the Clark sisters, all these gospel groups, the Georgia choir, like there's all these, um, I don't know, seemingly innocent groups that are mentioned in this document. Um, so, okay. He gives bad boy rec another name. Yeah. 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 I mean, this thing with P Diddy guys is huge, huge, huge. So Stephen thinks that Harry will be deposed in the lawsuit. That will be a whole new level to all the drama going on with them. Harry needs a lot more mental health services. <laughs> yes. Um, he won't be implicated otherwise. Yeah. They did say he's not a defendant. He hasn't been implicated, but they also said that many other homes, I'm sure it's not home in Montecito, are going to be raided soon and all, you know, because they're just going all at it. Um, I told you that Kate had the parasitic. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So that is what I have for tonight. Um, apologies. Who apologized? Who didn't apologize? Kate has received apologies from many people with the exception of Kim Kardashian, who I guess doesn't feel like she needs to apologize. We have, um, the king, who they say will be up showing up for, um, who will be showing up for Easter. And then we have Harry, who's been implicated with P. Diddy. And I'm just going to post my, my buddy's uh, comment, even though I have heard that too. There has been like some of these things, if you read on P. Diddy, it's not, it's really, really uh, next level. It's next level. So if you haven't watched the whole thing tonight, watch it. But I want you guys to know that I'm very grateful for you guys. I will be coming back on again. I did post a little, kind of a video with more extensive details regarding this. Um, and when do I have them? When do I have my lives? I typically will have them Monday or Tuesday nights. And I do need to go on more often. Um, I was traveling this particular week again so that I could come up to the Midwest. And, um, but, but I will be posting um, more lives while I'm here. I thank you guys so much. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, would, you, uh, would you come to a wedding? I always, I, I'll, I'll come to Las Vegas anytime. 
maybe not anytime, but I would love to go to Las Vegas. I need to get there again. All right. I'll talk to you guys. Bye.